I'm Rob Kaiser. I'm the CEO of Revive Consulting and the creator of the Global Values Project. I believe there's a close correlation between how present someone's values are in their life and how happy they are. And I created the Global Values Project to, to prove that theory and share the power of a value-driven life with people. Martin Luther King Jr. said, our scientific power has outrun our spiritual power, that we have guided missiles and misguided men. We're all born with this natural guidance system. And at the Global Values Project, the, the tool we use to connect with that system to, and understand that system is our values. Have you ever been playing Trivial Pursuit or maybe taking a multiple choice exam or playing along with a TV quiz show? And as soon as you hear the question, you know the answer. It just pops into your head. But you think about it for a bit and you think yourself out of the right answer. Why is it that we're so good at thinking ourselves out of right answers? Or maybe you've had uh, one of those out of the blue ideas that hits you like a bolt of lightning. This energy jolt just hits you. Where does that energy come? And how often was the idea that came to you in that moment exactly what was needed? Or maybe you've been 100% confident of a decision that you've made. It, you just know it's right deep down in your gut. But when someone asks you to explain, how do you know this is the right way to go? The best you can come up with is just because. How can we be so sure of something we can't even articulate? Well, to give one possible explanation for why these things happen, uh, just try something with me. Wherever you are, sitting, standing, just shut your eyes and relax for a little bit and take a couple deep breaths. And with one finger, simply point at yourself. And now leaving your finger wherever it is, open your eyes. Where are you pointing? Most people that I do this exercise with are pointing right here, not at their head, where we typically think of ourselves, our ego, our logic, our reason, being right here at our heart. My theory on the connection between values and happiness is that this is where those right the first time answers come from. That this is why we can trust just because. That this is the source of those great idea energy bursts. And that this is the source of our values and a value-driven life. A lot of studies have looked at the effects uh, that stress have on our bodies, our physical selves. We know it's a precursor to make us more susceptible to colds and flus, everything as minor as that, to heart disease and cancer. And we know this because we can study the gene expression in our body related to stress. But there was one study that took a totally different approach. They wanted to understand how happiness affected our, our bodies. They looked at a group of people and what they found was they essentially fell into one of two groups. The first group had hedonic happiness. This is the type of happiness that comes from living the good life, having the, the great job and the nice house and the right neighborhood and money and a great car, one that's clearly better than your neighbors, that type of thing. These people, when you looked at the genetic level, still had really high levels of stress and inflammation in their bodies, even though they said they were very happy. The second group, these, this group had a eudaimonic happiness, and this is happiness that comes from having a meaningful, purposeful life. And this group had extremely low uh, gene expression for inflammation associated with stress. So in the context of, of what's a value-driven life, what do we take from this? You know, for me, it's, I, th I think it's this, that our brains can trick ourselves into thinking we're happy but our bodies know what real happiness is. The, uh, the folks at the uh, Applied Mathematics uh, Department at Rice University um, posted a lot of information on the vagus nerve system. It's like Las Vegas, but spelled V-A-G-U-S. This nerve system is connected to every major organ in our bodies, and it connects those organs directly into the brain. And when you think about every cell of every major organ being in constant communication with everything else that's going on in every other cell, that's a ton of information available to us. In fact, they think 80 to up to 90% of the information in the vagus nervous system is traveling from our organs to our brain. The heart is part of the vagus nerve system and maybe one reason why so many of us point here when we're asked to point to ourselves is they looked at the um, 
the energy waveform, the amplitude of the energy of the heart, and it's actually 60 times greater than that of the brain. The folks at the HeartMath Institute mapped the electromagnetic field of the heart, and they found that it extends many feet outside of our bodies. In fact, the electromagnetic field of the heart is 5,000 times greater than that of our brain. So this artist's representation of the left and right hemispheres of the brains really demonstrates what might be going on with our two study groups. The left side of our brain is responsible for logic and reason. And the right side of our brain does creativity and passion. The left side handles the words that make up the language that we use, but it's the right side that gives those words their meaning. The left side likes to break information down into all its bits and pieces, parts, and store it away in nice, neat, tidy categories. And the right side is always looking to make new connections across those pieces. And the left side likes to focus on the situation at hand with laser sharpness while the right side is always seeking to understand the bigger picture. So it seems just as we can think ourselves out of those right the first time answers, we can also trick ourselves into thinking we're happy when we're not. We now know that hedonic happiness is superficial and temporary, and it only comes with this side order of inflammation that nobody wants. But the eudaimonic happiness, the value-driven happiness, that is deep and purposeful and meaningful. Albert Einstein, before neuroscience was all the rage it is today, he said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind a faithful servant. We've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. I think the key takeaway from this for me is none of us should be settling for superficial happiness. We should let our values drive our life. Our values will always point us to the life that holds the most meaning for us. So one of the first challenges we focused on was how are we going to prove this theory on the connection between values and happiness? How are we going to quantify it? Um, especially when so many of us don't even specifically know what our values are. So to help us with this, we created the values assessment tool. It's a free online tool that helps a person identify and connect with their values, assess how happy they are in different aspects of their life, and understand the connection between how present their values are in, the, in those different areas. The design of the tool is based on a lot of neuroscience principles, um, like the ones we've already started to touch on here. Neuroscience, and specifically in the tool, we're trying to get you into this left brain, right brain balance state uh, where they're both working together because we know this is the space that when we're in this, this is when we're most in touch with ourselves. Well, we first ask you to rate how happy you are in different aspects of your life on a scale from one to 10. One is could not be any worse and 10 is could not be any better. And we present those results back to you in a pie graph that again, as a step into the left brain, right brain integration, we ask you to take a look at that number that you assigned, that you quantified this, this happiness with, with your left brain, to that emotional intensity that you feel when you really think about what is going on as far as happiness is concerned here. And so you may want to go back and reiterate through that until every life aspect that you're looking at relative to all the others is, is scored correctly. We then walk you through identifying your top values. And our starting place for this is something we call triggers. A trigger is any event, activity, anything that happens that evokes a strong negative emotional response in you. Well, we start with triggers because everybody has them and they're pretty easy to identify. So they're a great place to get connected with. Think about one of your own triggers. What happens when you really focus on that situation? Maybe your stomach gets butterflies, or your jaw clenches, or your shoulders hunch, or your breath quickens. Remember the vagus nerve. You're having this physical response because something has triggered something deep inside you that is in conflict with one of your values. So think about what that means. You already know your values. 
your body is talking to you about them all the time. All you need is a little help connecting with them and understanding them and figuring out how to use them for living your own value-driven life. So with a number of different triggers identified, we then, we then ask you to come up with some positive counters. A positive counter is the energetically opposite feeling, emotion, idea of whatever that state of the trigger is. The positive counters for the trigger of laziness might be, well, hard work, accomplishment, impact, um, but you can get really clever and creative too, like use the names of songs like The Climb from Miley Cyrus or uh, The Ant and the Grasshopper from the children's stories or quotes, um, faith without works is dead, those types of things. The richer the context you can bake into your positive counters, the more powerful they're going to be for you. So once you have your list of positive counters together and you're happy with those, just take a look at what they are and what they represent and what they really mean to you and use those to generate a name for that value. It might be something on your list, might be something totally separate. So in our example, uh, you might choose grasshopper. You can have a value named grasshopper, but it means all that other stuff that's embedded in the positive counters. By giving each value a specific name, you're giving yourself an incredible tool. You can name that value and very quickly step into this rich energetic context of what it means, what it really feels like when you have that in your life. And you can use these feelings as uh, energetic pointers to know when you're on the right track, when you're making decisions, big and small. That is what living a value-driven life is all about. Once you have all your values named, you are then walked through a process that helps you gauge and assess how present each of those values is in each aspect of your life. And so it's this exercise of really going into yourself and figuring out where there's room for me to have this in this space of my life, how present really is it, and how far off the mark am I? And so that's it. It's those three steps that really make up the values assessment tool. Um, we then do, they'll give you uh, a bit of, in the next step sections, a bit of uh, some advice and help and pointers on how to use the results that you get to bring your values more presently into your life. Uh, some strategies on where to start, where to look, how to get focused. Um, and we also provide a community forum that's got a lot of uh, articles and tools that will help you along the way too. Because um, this is all about making effective and lasting change and the community forum is a great resource for that. So how's our theory holding up? Uh, so far, so good. Um, this chart actually shows the, the aggregate results from the users who had completed their assessment in just the first six weeks that the tool was launched. And we are thrilled uh, at the, the data that we've gotten. It shows that our theory on this connection between values and happiness has some serious traction. I'd like to extend a personal invitation to you to join the Global Values Project and to be part of our vision of creating a world full of people living value-driven lives. Choose well, and thank you. Ring. That's, I know, it's really <laughs> <laughs> retro. <laughs> I like it.